Hey guys, and welcome to game number 5 out of 100 of my Human vs. AI series, where I'll be taking on the AI-powered Scrabble Engine Best Bot in a 100 game match. Now, as you can see, the first 4 games of the match did not go well for me at all. Best Bot has stormed out to a 4-0 lead, accumulating more than 600 spread points in the process. So we really need to win badly, guys, to get back on track, and hopefully we can get one today. So, without further ado, let's jump in. And we are first. I have a blank, which is always... A nice sight to see this early in the game. Unfortunately, I don't have much I can really do with it, given I have a Q, an X, a W, and a P along with it. So, I think here I probably want to just play Cot, unload the Q for 24. Keeps PWX, which of course isn't great, but I could maybe draw picks next to QI, assuming it stays open, of course, if I draw an I. There's ways to bail out of this. I could consider Wax, I guess, as well for 26, which does have the advantage of getting rid of the W, but I think I'd rather play Cot. The, the Q is much more of a liability than having the W is and, and the X, so I'm going to just play this. And the best spot now will think about how it wants to respond. If it stays open, which is unlikely, I'll pretty quickly just play Picks next turn. It's considerably better than my other options. Yeah, I mean, I could play... I guess I could also just play Wax, if for some reason I'm able to do that, but not Picks. I could also play In Wrap, keeping just X blank. Okay, so Best Bot plays just Val for 6. Interesting. So really, not giving much back at all to me. So, yeah, I don't have a lot of great options here. I could play PIU for 18. Which really, I mean, it doesn't accomplish much other than scoring 18 points and really giving nothing back either to best bot. So that's an option. I could trade. I think those are really my two only viable options. It's definitely, there's no way it's worth it to do this, right? No. 37 points in NPRW is really bad. So there's no way it's worth it to do that. Yeah, I mean, I just don't have any other reasonable plays. This is terrible. It gives back a ton of points as well. So yeah, I mean, I think it's just between PIU and trading. So, I don't know. It's like, it is kind of tempting to trade, just because this board as it stands right now is so bad. And if I trade, like, XWN, let's say, if I keep PIR blank, I'm pretty likely to hit a bingo next turn. And with PIU, I mean, I do score 18, which is, of course, nice. 18's a lot more than 0. But XNRW blank is pretty clunky, and I do still now sort of encourage best spot to play down here and open the board, and even though I have the blank, like, my rack is not great here, and I don't necessarily think I want the board to be opened at that time. I'd rather probably trade, so that if best spot opens the board after the trade, I'll be able to respond well. So I'm going to trade three. I'm going to keep the P so that if I bingo, it'll score a little more, and the PR goes really well. Okay, so that was not a particularly good draw. Draw another I and another R. So, not ideal. But the good thing is... Well, there's a couple of good things. Uh, the good thing is I have an H, so I can play something like Thrip next turn, potentially, to score pretty well and unload some tiles. The other good thing is I could potentially hit Hair Grip if the bot gives me an A or a G. Not likely, but it's certainly possible. And if all else fails, I could still play PIU, potentially. So we'll see what best bot comes up with in this position. But without an S, there's very, very little to do. I mean, neither of these words take any hooks other than an S. And, I mean, without an H, like I have here, I mean, you could play from the V, I guess. Other than that, like, there's just shockingly little to do on this board, which again is part of why I wanted to trade, because I have a very good rack, and I was kind of hoping that if best spot opened, I'd be able to capitalize. So we'll see if that happens, and best spot does trade four, so not a huge surprise there, just again given the lack of options. So, now, now the board isn't like so impossible to use that I'm going to trade back and go for a 6 pass or anything. I think best spot is too smart to fall for that. And I mean, you can still make a play from the V or something. Plus, I have Thrip here, which is a, a nice play. It scores 23, keeps IR blank, which is 
pretty much what I would keep anyway if I traded. And it does open a bit, but I've got a blank. That's fine. I could pay, play Thur, I guess, as well. Probably gives back a bit more, though, I would think. It doesn't take an S, but it does take an L and a D. It also makes plays on the 8-row potentially more dangerous. Something like Azote would really hurt there, whereas after Thrip, such plays aren't really possible. So I think Thrip makes a little bit more sense. Okay, that's what we love to see here. We are definitely going to be bingoing next turn. And we have a bunch of reasonable options. So of course I have many 7s here ending in an S that'll play either with Cots or with Thrips. But probably my best play is going to be something like Briniest through this I, which will score 86 points on a double-double. That looks pretty solid. Yeah, something with Thrips. So let's say I play Brinies over here. Yeah, that's 82. So that's a few less points. Probably, okay, so he plays Upgirt, which does foil both of those. I might be able to still get something here, though. Let's see. Hmm, so A is nothing... B, C, binders, rebinds, and inbreds. None of those are going to work. Bingers. Ber oh, Berlin's. Okay, there it is. Yeah, I knew there was something. That's got to be best, right? I mean, it's 84 points. There's definitely no double-double ending in an I. Yeah, that's got to be the best play. Okay, and a pretty good draw here, too. I have... Plastery or Saltery for 90. I also have Saltery, P-S-A-L-T-R-Y, as a 7. But I don't think, at least as the board currently stands, that's going to play. Upgirt does not take an S. It's a past tense of Upgirt. Upgirt would take an S, but not Upgirt. Do I have anything through... This I and the 8s there? I don't think I do. Dang, so it plays Ween, which does block my 8s through that E. And yeah, I don't unfortunately think Sultry is going to play anywhere else. Which is too bad. Yeah, it's just Sultry and Plastery. Or Sultry, I should say, and Plastery as the 8s. Yeah, Sultry doesn't quite fit over here either. Okay, so... What do I want to do? Probably something with this W? Not really dying to keep four consonants, though. It's something like Whaley. Oh, I also have Punty through here. It's not a bad play. 34 keeping ALRS. I do like keeping a vowel. I also, maybe this this is actually probably better. Playing Platy here, yeah, that's got to be better, because it's 32. It scores just about as much as Plenty, uh, and it also blocks the W. And RS is probably just as good as ALRS, especially there's another blank. Some good scoring tiles. A little extra turnover can't hurt. So yeah, Platy looks really good. I wonder if Ply over here is, is worth considering. I mean, there's a lot of upside with the abise hook, but it also takes an E, and there's so many E's left, so I think I'm a little bit hesitant to do that. If I were down, it's almost certainly a play I would make, but, and I wonder if it's a play Best Spot would make. I've seen Best Spot make some pretty aggressive plays when it's ahead. Like, there is a lot of upside, but I just don't think it's a necessary risk. Like, I'm going to be up 100 after Platy with a great leap, RS, and this board is pretty bad, all things considered. Like, I've got a very good chance at hitting something with Cots in the pretty near future. And there aren't any huge scoring spots. There's a couple bingo lines, but nothing super easy to hit other than these folders and Upgirt, which hopefully I'll be able to close down pretty soon. This really just makes the whole top of the board really, really hard to deal with. So yeah, I'm going to... Or hard to use, I should say. Easy to deal with for me as the player in the lead. Hard to use for him as the player who's trailing. So yeah, I'm going to play Platy. Uh, and uh, I have rollouts through this T. If it stays open, it does. Okay. So that's a nice, easy play. And I'm liking our chances here, guys. I don't want to speak too soon because I've seen Best Spot go on some crazy tears. But I'm up 157 points. I have a decent rack here for scoring. I'm feeling pretty good. 
Okay, so best spot doesn't bingo. It plays wall for 30. And yeah, I'm up 127, so I'm up a lot. And I can score pretty well with Cad. That's 38 points, which is substantial. I am a little bit concerned about this leave, though. We, we see that the Val constant ratio is already almost even, which is pretty Val heavy, because normally the, the bag starts with 42 Vals, 58 constant, so it actually starts a little constant heavy. So anytime you see the same number of Vals and constants, it's actually slightly more Val heavy than usual, so I'm not dying to play Cobb keeping three Vals. Do I have anything good through this L? Leak doesn't work. Yeah, maybe not really. I mean, I don't want to sacrifice a ton of points. Also, if I do something like this, I mean, not only does it sacrifice points, but of course it also gives back an E to work with. I could play Baltai, but yeah, that's just, that's 14 less points. That's just too many points to give up. Yeah, I mean, there is still a 7 line here. And look, I mean, AEIT isn't that bad. Like, I still have a decent enough chance of drawing two consonants. So, yeah, I'm not thrilled about it. I just don't... I don't have any fours there. I don't really want to play ABBA. Again, it's a pretty big point sacrifice. Yeah, I don't... Oh, I... No, never mind. I was I was looking at possibly playing something here, like Bader, which would actually be pretty cool, but it makes IL, so I can't do that. I'm close to some plays there, but I'm not going to really be able to do all that much. So, alright, yeah, I think it's probably between Cab and the uh, smaller score. Oh, actually, there's Tillock. I just saw Tillock. That might be worth considering. Yeah, actually, this is kind of cool because it, defensively, it is, it is nice because it blocks the Cots hook. It also blocks sevens above or below rollouts. It does give back this T, which is not that hard to hit. This K is, it's something I'll want to block later because it does potentially score a lot of points. But it's not easy to hit. I also saved the B for scoring place here too on my next turn if nothing else materializes. So I think this is worth it because the leaf is a lot better for this pool and for scoring. And again, when you have this much of a lead, you usually want to be trying to keep scoring tiles more as opposed to bingo tiles. I don't need to bingo to win. I just need to make sure I can keep scoring and keeping the initiative. So I think Tillock is a better play. Then, then Cobb. I'm going to go ahead and do it. Wow, okay. Let's go. That was a very good draw, of course. And I'm close to Broad X. I'll have that if I get an A or an O to work with. Close to things like Extra Bold, too, as a 9. Yeah, I'm now quite confident we're going to be winning. And I am, uh, I'm not going to feel bad at all about this draw after after what Best Bot did to me the first two games. All right, so Best Bot just plays Mo, and yeah, no bingos here. I don't think. Oh, Bread Box almost works too, huh? Yeah, anything else with Box? I don't think so. No, it shouldn't be. Broad X doesn't fit through this A. Yeah, I think I probably just play Box here, and I'm. Probably going to bingo next turn. I'm not sure where. Maybe to this T or from this L. But, I mean, I think that's just... Assuming I'm not missing a bingo, that's just got to be the right play. Like, yeah, what else do I do? I don't have anything to score more with this X here. So, yeah, let's play box. All right. Yeah, now, now I just have, like, a laddered or something here. Okay, and... Do I have a triple triple now? I might not. Yeah, it's a little bit of a clunky combination. Two A's, two D's, two E's. It's obviously worth a look, but I'm not feeling it at the moment. Yeah, I don't even see any eights off the top of my head. Just sort of going through the alphabet here. And that's assuming if there is no triple triple, I have to think about do I want to play ladder or do I want to block that line? At this score, I may want to actually play like endeared or something, but let's let's get to that in a minute once I 
establish that there are no triple triples here, which again, I don't think there are. Yeah, I don't think so. I've been through the whole alphabet in my head once now. Yeah, it's like not too bad, but at the same time with two A's and two E's, this makes it a little bit difficult. Yeah, there's there's nothing. I'm almost positive. Okay, so there's nothing there. So yeah, I can play laddered once again. That's 83 points. I can also play something like deadener. It's 76. It's got to be a more prudent play here. I mean, yeah, it gives back a potentially big play on column A. But I'm not worried about him scoring 50 at this score. Like, I need to be worried about a big play here. If I play laddered and he triple triples with Symazine, then, I mean, that's going to be 311 points, and I'm going to be very unhappy. So, yeah, I think I, I need to go here. Even in a tournament, I honestly think I would, because, like, it's not great for spread giving back this spot, but, like, I just gotta block that A. It's not a good pull, especially it's foul heavy, but, like, you just gotta respect the possibility, I think. So, I'm gonna play Dead in there. I could play Endeared as well, but this at least makes the E is slightly harder to overlap with. So, alright. Get some vowels. No huge surprise there. And yeah, I mean, it, it may work out better for him. It often will work out better for him, me playing Deadener as opposed to Laddered, but again, I just have to address that A at this score. Yeah, alright, I gave back Vice for 57, which again, it's not great. But kind of had to. And I, I know I'm going to be able to withstand a bingo, right? I'm still up over 100, so I wasn't too worried about that. And alright, what do I want to do here? No D for audition, of course. That would be nice. Yeah, I mean, I just kind of need to not do anything terrible, and I should be fine, I think. I guess Best Buck could still bingo twice and maybe cause me some stress, but it's going to be pretty tough. I don't really think I have a good way to score points, especially having all one-pointers. There are a lot of E's left. Maybe 2E over here just to block a little bit as well. It takes out that S, which is nice. It's not bad. I feel like I should have something a little better than that, but maybe I don't. I don't really like OI here. It does take out the L, but the L is not particularly easy to hit. Yeah, I think probably just 2E is fine to block a little bit. We'll go ahead and do that. Wow, that was a good draw as well. Hitting the Z. Womanize, Monazite, Romanize, a lot of eights. Nothing that's going to play now. And, ooh. Plays off. That's a very sneaky play. And see, this this guy's is why Best Bot is so much better than Hasty Bot. Like, it's setting up its D for Doff or its C for Cough. And I don't really have a way to deal with that. Very nice play by Best Spot there, and scoring a lot of points. I mean, I should be... The good news for me is, luckily, I should be up enough to withstand that. Like, I... I mean, unless I play this or something, like, I just have no good way to deal with that. And I think I'd rather just try to outrun. So, how do I score with my Z? If I can play four tiles too, then I'll force him to empty the bag if he bingoes. Alright, Metazoon? No, that doesn't work. I can play into Zoa. That's actually not too bad. Leave six in the bag. I mean, I think it's impossible to lose after that. I go up 130. Even if he plays something for 110 there, I'll be fine. So, into Zoa is fine. I just wonder if I have anything better. I might not. Yeah, I don't think I actually do. Also, there's a chance he doesn't have both the C and the D. And it does turn over tile as well, so if I can draw one of those, maybe he doesn't use it next turn. So yeah, I think that looks fine. I'm just not seeing a way to really score 
materially more points than that with the Z. So we'll do that. All right, so don't draw either the C or the D. No big surprises there. And yeah, I'm sort of at the mercy now of whether Best Buck keeps fishing and hits something on the top. Huh. Yes. Wow, interesting. So, all right, I guess it's threatening coined, C-O-I-G-N-E-D up top, which would, that's a lot of points. I mean, that's 6, 7, 8, 10, 42. That's 103 points. So I, that's exactly my lead now. So I need to be a little bit careful if I'm going to choose not to block that. Probably just, hmm, that's actually a pretty good play. Honestly, I might as well just empty the bag though, right? Like with Ulm. There's no reason for it to allow him to fish again. Like, it's, especially if I get rid of my H and my M to block Ope then I'm just completely conceding that if he has something there, he's going to get something there. But, like, he could still bingo out in the E column, right? So I think I should just say if he bingoes out, he bingoes out and cuts the spread. But even if he plays coined there or something, like I said, that's 103. Ohm is 30. I'll get three more tiles. So I'll have a 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 16 on my rack. That's a net of plus 14. Yeah, I'll still win by 14, even in the worst-case scenario. I cannot lose. So let's go ahead and do that. And it doesn't have, well, I drew a lot of vowels, but it doesn't have coin. So, okay. Good outcome for us here, and we'll see what Best Bot comes up with for the best bingo. Probably something with Doff, I would imagine. Jin? Is it C stuck, though? It's probably C stuck if it plays Jin, so I don't think it can do that. Oh, maybe just Genic. That looks pretty good. Keeping ND, though. Is it going to go out with ND? Yeah, actually, where can it even go out? I guess it sets up end. But does it have another out? It might not. I mean, that might not even be that big a deal, because, like, I just have such garbage. Like, I'm probably going to just play Veggie anyway. Yeah, I'm... It's interesting. With Best Bot taking some time, I'm curious to see if I can figure out what the optimal endgame is. I trust Best Bot is going to play the optimal endgame. I mean, Genic is... It's a lot of points. It's 36 points. I just feel like that's got to be it. Because, yeah, Jin, I'm pretty sure it's C-stuck. I mean, it doesn't have to go there now, though. Because I literally can't block that spot. The thing is, it can't play off ND right now anywhere, as far as I can tell. Right? There's nowhere to play off DN. So, yeah, I don't... Does it have anything else really ending in C? Not much. What else does it even have ending in D? Yeah, nothing great. I, I wonder if it can go out in 2 by playing up there. It, does, it doesn't even have one C spot, too. So it can't just play... Wow. Very interesting. So it's just slow playing with Entezo, and that's fascinating, actually. It kind of makes sense, because I can't... See, now, okay, because I can't go out in two, because my rack is so bad. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah, so I can't go out in two. So Best Bot's like, then why do I have to go out in two? So Best Bot's just going to play off an and score, and now it's going to play Genic, and then it'll have a, just a D, and that, of course, it'll be able to go out with. Very, very cool stuff. So, okay. Uh, I guess I should just play Vogi or Veggie, right? I mean, I don't think there's any good reason not to. It has seating, but it's not going to be able to go out with that. Now, the question is, Vogi or Veggie? Does it matter? Well, I guess, what's my play going to be next? Probably OI here, right? I could also play, is it worth playing OI first? I don't think so. I don't think that has any advantage. I mean, I have to imagine that whatever I do, it's going to play some combination of Genic and a D drop. So, yeah, probably Genic and then I id and dope, right? Because that'll set itself up nicely. So, and it's not like I can go out anywhere that he opens. So, yeah, let's just play Veggie followed by OI. I imagine Genic has to be best here. Yep. And OI is. I believe my best play. Don't see how I'm going to do better than that. 
Now it's going to go out with a D. So, all right, we won by 101. Let's go. Our first one of the series, and a much-needed one at that. I definitely drew well, but I think I played pretty well, too. Let's uh, let's take a look at some of those turns. Yeah, Static apparently likes Wax by about a half a point, but I definitely would prefer to get rid of the Q. And a fascinating play by Best Bot here. Look at this, guys. Just playing Vow for six, passing up all manner of longer plays like Ombre and Marvy. Mar Ooh, Marvy here is, is interesting because it sets up the B. See, this is the type of play I would have almost expected a bot like Best Bot to make more. Yeah, that's I would have almost even considered that because there's now only one M and one B left. It's not... It's far from a guarantee that that's going to get blocked. It's fairly likely to, but... And, like, if it does, you're still scoring pretty well and cleaning up your rack. Yeah, this... I don't know. This foul play, it's really interesting because... Like, you're down, right? And you don't have an S. It's just... It's very counterintuitive to completely lock yourself in on a board that's S-dependent when you don't have an S and you're only turning over two tiles towards an S. So, I don't know. That's a very fascinating play, I have to say. It obviously has the advantage of, of giving nothing back. It's a very patient play. It's it's probably more patient than I would have been. I would have probably played Marvy or maybe Ombre. But, yeah, I mean, I get not wanting to do this, opening up an S-hook like that. At least Ombre and Marvy don't give back S-hooks. Yeah, I mean, Ombre's not bad. Like, it keeps a V, which, of course, isn't great. It doesn't give back any big scoring plays. I don't know. It's a very interesting play. Yeah, I think trading here is right. I don't really want to keep NRWX. Best spot opting to trade here. Yeah, that looks good. I don't really like this. But see, like, I would have... It's interesting to me that best spot kept tiles. Like, I would have definitely strongly considered trading 7 here. Like, if I didn't have the blank, I probably would have traded 7. But, like, you really need an S. I guess there's there enough chance of hitting something with the V. I guess you're also thinking that I'm probably going to open something up. So maybe keeping some of these... Bingo tiles make sense. Uh, whoops. Sorry, guys. I didn't mean to hit that button. I accidentally played to the end of the game. Here we go. Um, okay, so yeah, Thrip, that's got to be right here. Up Gert. Yeah, another bad draw by Best Bot. Pulling WUG after a trade. Up Gert is not a great play, but it looks best. Yeah, Berlin's. Glad I saw that. That's definitely the best play. Ween. Yeah, that makes sense. Playing Nos sets up a G hook as well as an S hook you don't have. So, Ween makes sense. Um, oh, Sprawly. I didn't see that. So, Pundi does... Wow, ranks that much higher on Steady? Is ALRS that good? Huh, I didn't really think ALRS was that good, but apparently it's a little bit better than RS. Uh, I'm fine with Plady, though, over Punty to block that spot. Sprawly, it's close, because 13 points is a bit to give up for the S, but the S is really nice here because of the Kots hook. Like, the S is a... Probably better than average tile on this board, especially with good bingo tiles, solely because of that spot. So, and Sprawly does allow for the top left to be reopened a bit. Like, Plady just is so defensive. It completely locks down this top left area of the board, especially with this QV there. Like, it's so hard for the bot to access that part of the board. I think Plady's fine. I should have at least seen Sprawly, but I think Plady's fine. And yeah, once I get rollouts here, I was definitely feeling pretty good. Uh, yeah, the bot could have played Swam. But it definitely needs to start opening, which it does with Wall. Yeah, I saw Cap. Oh, I didn't think about Kive. I think I got a little bit hung up on playing off uh, one of the A's. And yeah, Cab is miles better on Static. Like, 13 better, actually. But uh, yeah, I mean, AEIT should not be worth plus 7. I know the Google Static values are a little bit too much in favor of Val Heavy Leaves. This is definitely not what Quackle would say. Um, but yeah, in either way, I'm not surprised that Cobb is better on Equity. I... Would have maybe played Kaib if I saw it. I don't know. I mean, Telok is nice. Like I said, it takes out it takes out a lot. It takes out Kots hooks and sevens above and below rollouts. So it's very good defensively, and the B is nice for scoring. I think Telok is still a fine play. And hey, I blocked. Look at this. I blocked everything. I blocked Omertas and Kots. Uh, I blocked Omertas above rollouts. I blocked. Well, I guess Maestro didn't play, so maybe that's all I blocked. But like I I blocked two bingos with Telok. It definitely paid off. Um. Oh, that's interesting. Just Ox. Huh. I think Box is fine, though. I mean, I'm still probably more likely to bingo, given that I have to bingo from that L. 
All right, yeah, didn't miss anything here. I saw laddered, but I just, again, at this score, uh, I feel like I need to respect that open A. There's a ZN scene, again, something like Magazine or Cymazine is absolute disaster, so I need to block that. Dead and Earth seems fine. Yeah, I saw OI here, but I decided to play off an extra tile and block the S. Wow, off key. Look at that. Wow, that's 35 points without covering a premium square. That's That's rare. It's very rare you see a play score 35 points without covering any bonus square whatsoever. That's, uh, of course, for non-bingo. That's very, very impressive. Uh, yeah, I mean, off is... Oh, it didn't have the C or the D! Wow. Crazy. So I guess it's just figured that its only chance was to draw the C or the D. Is there anything it could hit, though? Like, this rack is pretty clunky. I guess more in the long run, right? It wants to just create that opening and hope somehow... Like, maybe I have seven vowels I have to trade... It can maybe score with boxy or something, and then hit something there. Like, I guess it's reasonable. Yeah, it's very fascinating play. Oh, I missed Atomize. Uh, yeah, that's probably better. I mean, the M is not bad for scoring, but, but yeah, Atomize, there's probably no reason not to just take a few extra points. Also, it doesn't give back this other place to bingo here as well. So, uh, I mean, granted, most bingos are going to play with either Dolph or Eds anyway, so that's not too big a deal, but there's still no reason to do it. So yeah, Atomize would have been a little bit better, but either way, hard to imagine losing at this point. Uh, yeah, so, wow, so the bot still didn't have the D. It had the C, but it couldn't really do much. Yeah, played Yes, which... What's it going for with the Yes? I guess probably... Coins? I don't even know. I'm not sure it realistically can win, but uh, interesting. So yeah, I, I just play Ohm again. I knew if it bingoed out, I would still have enough to win. And it finds this really cool best endgame of Entozoan. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to put this into Quackle because the, the game wasn't on the line or anything. But I feel like Veggie has to be right. I mean, I can't go out into I can't. I literally can't do anything about the top. So might as well just do that. And then, yeah. So overall, this was a really sound game for me. I uh, didn't make any major mistakes. Atomize would have been a little bit more precise later on, but the game was mostly decided at that point. Uh, early, I think I played pretty well, and uh, yeah, just really, really happy to get on the board here. So we improved to 1-4, and four, which is still not great, but it's uh, it looks a lot better than 0-4. So, all right, not bad. Uh, let's uh, hopefully continue this trend in Game 6 and uh, improve to 2-4, and four, which uh, would be pretty respectable. So... That's it for this one, guys. Thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you soon for Game 6, where I very much hope to get another win under my belt. So I will, uh, I'll see you all there. Have a good one, guys. Thanks again for watching. Bye-bye.